The power of habit is that it will help you last long. Whatever you are doing now is a seed you are sowing for the future. Prayer is one of the tools that God has given us to be intimate with Him. Tell your neighbor, I hate so far. I hate so far. It's not my fault. I hate so far. First Kings 1 verse 32. First Kings 1 verse 32. I read. And King David said, Come me Zadok the priest, and Nathan the prophet, and Benaiah the son of Jehuda, and they came before the king. Hallelujah. Two Fridays ago, this is a new week, so that will be uh, two weeks back, Pastor began introducing the theme of the month and began to speak of priest. And as you understand, this is our month as what? Priest, prophet. Hallelujah. And he made us to understand the essence of God calling us to a place of priesthood. Not as much as, not in a situation whereby you say, okay, this is a priest, ordained priest, talking about everyone being called a place of priesthood. Hallelujah. Amen. And he did introduce us and get, get us to know the role or our role as priest. Hallelujah. Amen. We could remember the two points given. Hallelujah. Intercession and <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I will continue in that same line to emphasize some things we need to also know. And by the help of the Holy Ghost, we'll be teaching what we titled the priestly lifestyle. Or you say the lifestyle of a priest, the priestly lifestyle. And you understand that like I began to make reference um, that Friday that when we made mention of priests, so if you if you're a female, it's applicable to you also. So a priestess, hallelujah. Amen. To begin, let's see Hebrews chapter 7, verse 21. Before we dive into other matters, hallelujah. For those priests were made without an oath, but these with an oath by him that said unto him, The Lord swear and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Hallelujah. Amen. Getting you to understand and the emphasis that I will be laying today on priesthood, or you seeing yourself as a priest, or living the lifestyle of a priest, there's no other person to use as an example, and most importantly, to see his lifestyle than the person of Jesus Christ. You understand here, it's telling us that he has been made priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. Hallelujah. And you are made in the image and likeness of God. And you desire to follow the footsteps of Jesus Christ. This is not our main emphasis, but I said to read it so that you understand if you have been called to a place of priesthood, you understand where it's coming from. Jesus, whom you believe in, is a priest in order of Melchizedek, priest forever. Hallelujah. And here you are coming into the picture. And there are some lifestyles we see that a priest should possess, that you should possess. Hallelujah. You should possess it and know that this is the way I should be treating people or this is the way I should be living as a priest. Well, I began to make mention of interceding, intercession, hallelujah. Amen. Those are the things, the role you should be playing, teaching, hallelujah. In the book of Jeremiah 3.10, I think, he said, I will give you shepherd after your own heart who will impart you with knowledge. Hallelujah. With knowledge. So let's quickly go 
to our main emphasis, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 17. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 17. Wherefore, in all things, it behoved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. Hallelujah. The first quality will be seen is priests are merciful. Hallelujah. They are merciful. Luke chapter 18 from verse 35. You see, you have to understand that for you to really fulfill this particular ministry God is calling you to, you have to be merciful. The same way Jesus. Remember that was, that was where we read Hebrews chapter 7. So that you see that Jesus is priest forever. So if you're emulating, you are emulating the person of Jesus Christ. And it came to pass that as he was, as he was come near unto Jericho, a certain blind man sat by the wayside begging. And hearing the multitude pass by, he asked what it meant. And they told him that Jesus of Nazareth passed by. And he cried, saying, Jesus, that son of David, have mercy on me. Now, see what happens in 39. And they which went before rebuked him that he should hold his peace. But he cried out so the more. So much the more. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. 40. That's where we stop. Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought unto him. And when he was come near, he asked, he asked him. Let's stop there. Don't go for that. You see, the point I want to bring out here is that, you see in 39, when he was shouting, Jesus, Jesus, that son of David. Jesus, that son of David. They rebuked him. Say, keep quiet. Hallelujah. Amen. But Jesus Christ understood that for me to be able to even intercede, like what I began to mention last two Fridays, for you to be, you have to have a merciful heart. Hallelujah. Amen. When they were rebuking Jesus, say, leave him, let him come. He kept, he kept shouting, have mercy on me. You know how many people even, someone that offended you 10 years ago, up to today, have mercy. Mm -mm. But yet, when you go to pray, you just, Lord, have mercy. The Bible began to say, if you've not loved your neighbor whom you're seeing, how can you say you love God? Hallelujah. Amen. You've not had mercy on someone, on your friend. Tell me, no, I will not, I will not, I will not, forgive, I will not forgive you. I will not, mm -mm, mm -mm. But you go, to, you go before the God Almighty, you are even shedding tears. You know, the things that could stop someone from getting what God has already released could be as little thing as bearing grudges. Hallelujah. Nobody says you should reconcile with the person, maybe get to be friends with God. You say, have mercy, forgive, and let go. Hallelujah. You see, you see ladies can do this very well. I'm sorry. If, if it's a guy, if we have issue now, so no, no problem, just go your way, I go my way. We see, we greet. But ladies, they can pass by each other like this. Mm -mm. Good man, good man. Mm -mm. Nothing. I don't joke with ladies. That's why you should be careful. A lady can be in good time with somebody this minute. Go outside and come back. The other day, people I saw together, this one was posting, this one was posting this one. I thought everything is still sugar and honey. Not for me to be on phone with one. And one was passing. I said, oh, I'm talking to you. I looked at the countenance. After I found out that everybody in your room, I know what I'm saying. If I even tell you these people, I know more for you. You tell me it's a lie. 
there is no how. I'm saying just just less than two weeks. They were posting it. This one was posting. This one was posting. Oh, 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 this is the best friend that can ever happen to. Post. This one is the best. This one is. They post before the camera. They smile. They smile. You know, the only truth of the matter. I don't want to dig deep. Do you know why? Next week they will come back. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Let me focus on this matter. Jesus had mercy on him. I think he should come. Come. Hallelujah. For you to be able to draw someone closer, you have to have a merciful heart. Hallelujah. You have to, I know what is that? You have to be compassionate. Hallelujah. I have to sing, compassionate Jesus, how I love you. you that is compassionate, calling on compassionate Jesus, are you compassionate yourself? Hallelujah. If folks will really listen to the lyrics while singing, before shedding tears, it will really make more sense. Hallelujah. It's one thing for the song to be so emotional that you are shedding tears and it's another to understand what you are singing. The other day, one of the sisters said, you know, this is why it took me a while to understand, you know, this song. And I don't feel this song that you normally sing, uh, um, Blessed Assurance. That she went and, you know, she looked at it and she found out the meaning of these words. But to some, you just blessed assurance. There is Gibson now. <laughs> National anthem. If he doesn't sing it now, you say, uh, We have an anchor. <laughs> but are you paying attention to the lyrics of those words? Hallelujah. Is the words that matter. That's why there's somebody times a, a song, a Christian song doesn't mean you must listen to it. Hallelujah. Amen. Because there's some songs that are times Christian songs, but they are not uplifting. They don't edify, they don't comfort. There is nothing spiritual in it. Hallelujah. Amen. You get to people that really release Christian albums, they beg. They take time to beg the song. They pray. They fast. Not after eating. You are full. <laughs> what you are hearing is delicious food. <laughs> and you begin to pen down. What will you eat? food you be paying down? <laughs> Hallelujah. You see, I need to say this before I move further. When we're talking about this priesthood, we're talking about you knowing the role you should play, not so much as it is a priest wearing a cassock. Hallelujah. Not so much as it is wearing a, a, a garment. Your attitude and your lifestyle should tell that this one is different. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 4, when they strengthened, they, when they, 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 feel, they saw the one that had been healed, they called them to the council. They would say, they say, they took knowledge of them that this one are unlearned, but they took knowledge that they've been with Christ. You see, your life should show that you've been with Christ. Not so much as it, as it is in the open place, in the church auditorium, but as it were in the closet. Hallelujah. If you've been with Christ, now I can just say, sister, please, I need to help me with, 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 with worship. On plan. You sing. Hallelujah. Matthew 9, verse 36. Before I go to Matthew, please. Luke, Luke 10, 36, verse 37. Let, let me buttress a point. Luke 10, 36, 37. You see what happened? Talking about the role you play, not so much as being a priest. If you understand what happened in this account in this place, is the good Samaritan. 
The priest came, passed by. The Levite came, passed by. And Samaritan came and said, which now of these, when they asked Jesus, who is now your neighbor? Who is the, Jesus, they asked Jesus, who is my neighbor? And he began to answer, and he gave them this parable. Now he said, which now of these three thinkers thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? 37. And he said, he that showed mercy on him. Hallelujah. He that did what? Showed mercy on him. All of them passed by. There was no compassion on the wounded. There was no compassion on the afflicted. There was no compassion. You know, if many would have a compassionate and a merciful heart, some of the atrocities going on would not be happening. Hallelujah. Most of our African nations, their hearts are hardened. What did I say? Someone will be killing you and killing the whole country, economy, and be, and be smiling. Hardened heart. No mercy, no compassion. And they go at night and they sleep. How do you sleep? Now let's go to Matthew. Matthew 9, 36. But when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep, having no shepherd. He moved with compassion. You see, if folks will really move with compassion on some matters, things will be easy. Hallelujah. He moved with compassion. When he, when he saw the multitude, what comes to your mind when you see somebody in a state of helplessness? Hallelujah. It's true that you are not the one that kept the person in that position, but what will be your first reaction? Hallelujah. In fact, the question should say, what will Jesus do in this situation? Better put. This is what Jesus did. When he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion. What moves you? Nothing. Me, nothing moves me. Nobody can move me. Nothing. Nothing moves me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. John 5, verse 5. You see, sometimes they help you render to come out of the place of a compassionate heart. Not because the person actually ended. it. I even help somebody. You know this person does not, this, don't deserve this thing. Hallelujah. And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity 30 and 8 years. Six. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Will that be made whole? Now look at the answer. The important man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled. Go back. Do you understand English? Six. When Jesus saw him lying, okay, the latter person said, he said unto him, will thou be made whole? Seven. The important man answered him, sir, I have no man when the water is troubled. It doesn't correlate. Will thou be made whole? Yes or no? <laughs> Hallelujah. It's a simple question of yes or no. See, I have no man when the water is so just like saying, do you want to make money? He said, I have no capital. Hmm? I began to recall several times. Say, you see some people in his office and you'll be wondering why is this person not using this medium to make money. Hallelujah. Amen. Do this and do that. Mm -mm. When the water is troubled, you see, to help people sometimes you have to be compassionate and merciful. Not because they end it. You see, this guy has been here for so long. He should know better already. Jesus didn't ask you to explain in details. In hundred words, say what your situation is. Mm -mm. He said, would that be made whole? I say, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I'm coming, another stepped down before me. Eight. Jesus said unto him, rise, take up thy bed and walk. Hallelujah. There's no need of long story again. He just said unto him, he said, rise, take up the bed and walk. Hallelujah. And the matter was settled. Let's take a second point. Hallelujah. The same Hebrews 2, verse 17. I don't need to go there, but when we read, when we read it, it, it said, 
priest forever, merciful and faithful. So the next thing, priests are to be faithful. Hallelujah. The word translated faithful there means trustworthy and believing. Hallelujah. Trustworthy and believing. You see, you have to be trusted to be able to help. Luke 16, verse 10. Before we read that, just leave, leave it there. You see, you have to be you have to be able to earn people's trust. Why is it that it's not everybody people go or run to to tell things? Because your mouth is like a basket that holds no water. You can't be trustworthy. You can't be trustworthy. Somebody just came to you for counsel or to just see your own side. That this person broke my heart. How do you see we know? <laughs> the whole city will know. They will know what the person has told you. Why can't your mouth just keep quiet for once? Hallelujah. So as a priest, you have to be faithful. You have to be trustworthy. You have to be believe. People should believe in you. Hallelujah. Amen. Most of the things Jesus did, he said, do you believe? Do you believe? Hallelujah. Amen. People only run to you when they believe and trust in you. You have to be faithful. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. Don't say until you have plenty before you begin to do what you need to do. If you have plenty, it's the same thing. In fact, faithfulness should be in every area. How have you handled that project someone has given to you? I don't mean your own project, someone's project. How have you handled it? You see, let me tell you, the same way you've handled someone's project, the same way you handle your own, I'm telling you. Nothing changes. Don't say when it comes, I will not change. Mm -mm. The same way. The same way. Hallelujah. It's not like somebody lo looking to get married and a guy comes and you know that this guy is a drunkard. But you like every other thing about him. You like that he, he, he has money, this one, that, that, but he is a drunkard. And you say, when he comes in, you change him. What you don't know is that when it comes in, <laughs> hallelujah, that he got married to you doesn't mean he will change. He will bring out the men him. Hallelujah. You see, since I'm, since I'm on this now, you see, the, the best thing you should do is, is train yourself. Is get prepared. Prepare yourself. There are some tasks that will hit you. Is how prepared you are will determine how well you manage them. Hallelujah. Amen. You, you, you can't tell what comes tomorrow. Hallelujah. To the glory of God, thank God for his faithfulness. But ju just imagine now that I don't even know how to own the gas, not talk more of boil water, not talk more of cook. What will be happening now? I will be on phone every time now. Hello, Ama. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I remember when my wife, was, my wife was in the hospital and um, of course, need to be cooking and taking to her because it's been a while, I've not been, not that I, I don't, I, can, I prefer what, what I eat and all, and it's not so much that I eat actually. And now I have to prepare some other things. And <laughs> the first day, was, it was funny. Because when I came, you know, when you were a bachelor, the way you arrange things were different. <laughs> now I came, I never knew that behind this one is another thing there. I have to call. Where is that? Uh, Pepe, 
Say it's there. I've not seen anything there. They say it's there. I've changed the container. I say today, not today. This spot, this spot, where is it? Say, I say, huh? Everything has changed location. Hallelujah. You see, now what you need to do is to be training yourself. Say, me, I can't cook. Why not learn? You see, you must not you must not be the best cook, but you should be able to prepare what your family or someone can eat. <laughs> Maybe the family is too much because all family will purge. All family will purge. Let's leave that one. For now, be preparing what you will eat. You do it for some time. And thank God now there's YouTube videos everywhere. You can improve. Hallelujah. You are doing typical African man. Cooking is for the women. Cooking is for the women. Hunger has not come. <laughs> do, you, do you know the home is sweet when when ah legi pasako to prediva? Like now, I enjoy how things are. Sometimes I'm, I'm with the baby. So when my wife is cooking and She's not able to finish up. My baby's crying. They need to be breastfed. I give her the baby. I can step in and continue from where she stopped. Yeah. Hallelujah. We touch it. Sometimes I start, she finish. No, the uh, uh, baby is crying. Come and breastfeed, baby. After you go and continue. You're a man. Hallelujah. <laughs> If, talking about faithfulness, if you are not faithful to yourself now, even in the play, in, in kitchen matters, you will not be faithful when you get married. I've not been hearing, some of you have not been hearing your father say that when he was young, he used to cook very well. But you know you've not seen him. <laughs> My dad said he was the best cook then. <laughs> now he is getting old. Don't come and be telling us story. Do act it. 